So right now we're looking at Study of a Skull by Cezanne. Uh, this painting really interests me because of its scientific nature. Tori and I are both neuroscience majors, and, you know, the brain is a typical thing that we look at every day. Right. It's very interesting to see the human skull in an artistic context. Even though it is in a painting, Cezanne still approaches his subject with an analytical approach. Right, so even the name of the actual painting confirms this because it is called a study. Um, and this is a very modernist trend to look at things through a scientific lens. Well, we see the subject in a lot of paintings, especially in the Dutch Vanitas that were highly regarded in the art world for their pairing of life and death. Right, and what's interesting about Cezanne's painting in particular is that it doesn't have this life component. Most Vanitas had flowers and food, um, but in this painting we only see death. Whereas in these Vanitas, they would have, you know, a single skull or a single uh, rotten fruit and things like that. Well, in this time period, we see a trend of death and disillusionment in art and literature. For example, Conrad's Heart of Darkness was published the same year and exposed the evil nature of mankind. Right, that's a very good observation. So what's also interesting to note is that beyond just the broad scale of the world, Cezanne experienced a lot of death in his personal life. His mom had just died, I think it was like four years beforehand, and um, right at this time he was very ill himself and he was on the brink of death. This was one of his final paintings as he died only a few years later. Right, Cezanne painted many skulls in the last years of his life. Maybe his own experiences with death influenced the way he painted the skull. He uses an almost monochromatic pal palette of brown hues. There are only a few splashes of blue and yellow to represent the hope of life in his painting. Right, and his use of watercolors makes the painting seem almost translucent. You can see the spots on the buffalo paper where he didn't cover the surface completely. And it really gives the painting an unfinished appearance similar to abrupt death because you see these empty, gaping holes. Another aspect I noticed that seems unfinished was the outline of the skull. There are multiple blurred lines surrounding the skull, and it's not a continuous line. This represents slow death as it gradually fades from the background of life to the main subject of death. Right, and going off of the lines from the skull... It's really interesting to see Cezanne's brush strokes. Uh, the background is made up of distinct horizontal and vertical brush strokes that give the painting a really flat perspective. Right, that definitely contrasts with the depth of the skull. The shading of the eyes and mouth create an abyss that seems to enter into darkness, emphasizing death even more.